Hello and welcome to Tech Back with James Whitfield and today we're looking at what could possibly be the cheapest quad monitor setup ever. Now this could have two options. It will either go really well or it will just be a complete disaster and a waste of money. It could possibly even blow up so I have absolutely no clue. Hopefully it's all going to go well. Hopefully the monitors actually still work but I've got two boxes down here so I haven't opened them up yet. I'll open them up with you. I know you're really lucky. The first box or the box on the right is, not that you can see it, kind of out of shot, is a box of monitors. It doesn't look very interesting, it's basically a cardboard box, but I'll show you in a minute. And the other one is a stand, and what happens with the stand, it clamps onto the desk, you've probably seen them before. The monitors actually attach to the stand. One thing to bear in mind when you do get one of these stands, if you are buying monitors and stuff like that, make sure it's got a visa mount on the back of the monitor. Just just check the monitor basically. Some of them just don't have the mountings on the back of the monitors. Funny enough, the more expensive monitors generally don't. I don't know why, but they just don't. Yeah, just make sure when you're buying them that look on the back if it's got four of those little screw hole things then you should be good. So the reason why I got these monitors cheaper is it was like an ex office clearance or somewhere that just has lots of computers. They were getting rid of monitors, probably an upgrade to some fancy other monitors. But I don't really care. And the reason why those monitors were so cheap is because they don't have any stands and obviously if you think about it for any normal person who doesn't have one of these monitor stands that's pretty useless because what are you, what are you going to do just light down on the table and just sort of type away this is not going to happen is it the idea is hopefully i'll be able to mount these onto the stand now this is the box of monitors very small box admittedly i mean hopefully it's packed out all right that's supposed to have four monitors in Remember, it's not like one, mon that's supposed to have four monitors. And the guy who's actually selling this actually wanted to even vlog off another monitor as well. I, I guess they just really just want to get rid of them, which is fair enough. But yeah, I don't need five, so four is a little bit over the top anyway. Yeah, the funny thing about this stand, I think you can get this stand as a triple monitor stand as well. And yeah, th this one for some reason was exactly the same price, so what happens is that you've got three monitors going across and one above it as well. So yeah, that is the idea of that. Fragile. Do, does anyone actually take notice of those labels? Who knows? We'll soon realise when we go to open it. One thing that I do think is because I got these monitors so incredibly cheap, they were literally, call it £20 or less each. No, that's for 1080p monitor, so I'm expecting defects, scratches, all that kind of thing. It's not going to be pristine condition. One thing I was thinking, if these monitors are really in that bad condition, at least I'll get a feeling of whether I actually like this setup or not and get some new monitors or refurbished or whatever, and then I'll know if I actually like this setup or not. Hopefully I do. I'm thinking the more space the better. I don't know how especially good these monitors are for gaming, but even just for everyday Windows tasks, I was thinking video editing would be really useful, having a spare monitor for previewing, having lots of space for the timeline and that kind of stuff. If you if you do video editing, you know the struggle of not having enough room. And yeah, for this I probably won't be able to find links in the description, but I'll, I'll put some search result links in the description, the things that I actually searched for to get this result. Sometimes it's not always the thing that you actually think of. Like, for instance, these monitors didn't actually mention that they were 1080p at all, so... What, what is that? There's a hole in the box. That's not too promising. I have a feeling the box will open this side. What I could really use is actually the body mount thing on the action camera. I haven't thought that far ahead, so I'm just going <laughs> to... I'm going to put up this for now. Anyway, yeah, that, that is the box. Have we got any scissors ready to use, or have I just not prepared? Scissors. I'll put this into this in the camera. Can I just balance it like that? Cool. So, I'm going to try and be careful because I don't want to break anything. Now that wasn't a good idea, I tried to balance the camera on the end of here, it ended up falling off. I might have to re-record the intro. The camera is still working, that's all good. We have fragile tape, we have packing peanuts. Can I manage to get these out of the box without the packing peanuts going everywhere? Probably not. So, they are monitors by the looks of it. Let's go ahead and get them out the box. Uh, Packing peanuts everywhere. Not a 
packing peanuts are still in the box. We haven't, I think we've managed to take a few out of them. But, um, that's as good as we're gonna go. We have four monitors. Now, I guess the size of the box, I completely forgot how thin monitors actually are. Uh, yeah, they are really thin these days, aren't they? Completely forgot that. Uh, can we tell which monitors which by the label? Uh, that's in another language. Supposedly, I should have three of the same monitors and one different one. I don't know which is the different one, but yes, I should have three identical ones and one slightly different one. So let's go ahead and open those. Yeah, I did start undoing the monitors, but then I just thought, where am I, am I gonna put them? I need to actually set up the stand first. So let's go ahead and set up the stand. This is really unorganized, this video. But yeah, I just figured, what am I, what am I supposed to do with monitors without stands? They're not gonna stand up themselves, am I? So let's go ahead and open up the monitor stand. Now I've cleared up some space on my desk. This had my previous monitor set up, and that, but I just thought I'd move that all the way. Sorry about all the if there's any dust on the desk and that kind of thing. I've given it a quick clean, but it's kind of been all funny. Follow me at Take Back All. We have a quadruple monitor stand, and hopefully this is going to be relatively easy to build, because I'm absolutely useless when it comes to building anything, like furniture, for example. And, uh, yeah, hopefully this is relatively straightforward. That is quite... Hefty. Let's move things out of the way. Let's move the important tech baffle cup out of the way. We don't want that destroyed. Installation instruction. How much instructions is there for a monster stand? Quite a lot, but let's bit. That's what I'm not about the, uh, the visa place. This is a lesson, always be careful when you're opening boxes. This wasn't actually like this, I think I just destroyed that with the scissors, so yeah. Um, hopefully I don't need to read anything. I've destroyed the instruction manual. Yeah, always open boxes carefully, don't do that. I'm gonna look at that, I think it actually stands up on the table. So we'll have to see how stable that is. So we have this thing. This I know, this is a stand. This looks like a stand, so hopefully that's a stand. This looks like the two sort of arms that go sideways to connect the various monitors. Is this something for? I don't know. Um, and then we've also got back a box around here, which has a hole or something. Okay, this has lots of bits and bobs. I don't know whether I'll go through this on video or not. We do have fittings, though, which is nice. Okay, this has lots of bits and bobs. The original plan was to create a really cool time lapse of me setting up the monitor stand. Turns out it's actually more complicated than I first thought. And yeah, me and my dad ended up setting it up. And eventually we got it all set up and it's all looking great now. But yeah, at first, if you could tell from the time lapse, I actually installed the bracket upside down. This is why I'm no good at flat pack anything, so yeah. But it's all set up now, the monitors haven't fallen off yet, I haven't actually installed the monitors, I didn't film that because it was kind of fiddly and to film it all would be, make it kind of more fiddly. Trust me, the monitors are on the stand and we're ready to get everything plugged in. Another reason why I got the monitors so cheap is because they didn't come with any cables. Luckily I've got these kettle leads hanging around from pretty much any computer I've ever bought. So, I've got loads of these lying around anyway, so it's no big deal. They all take the same kettle lead. Next up is the DVI lead. Again, these monitors do not take HDMI. They do take DVI though, which is a digital signal, and I can convert that to HDMI, DisplayPort, or whatever, on my graphics card. So it's, again, easy to set up. Just plug it in here and try and do so on camera. Probably fail. So this DVI goes to DisplayPort. I've got another DVI here. I'm going to plug that into the centre monitor. So this cable is a straight DVI to DVI connection. Next up is this cable, which is DVI to HDMI. 
As mentioned so far, all of these connections are all digital connections, but unfortunately for the fourth monitor it's a slightly different model, and that one only takes a VGA connection, which is kind of weird. So I'm just going to connect the VGA connection to a laptop just to test it out. Even my laptop doesn't take VGA connection, so I'll have to use this little netbook. Fortunately, I can set the resolution all good for a second monitor, so it won't be all stretched out and weird. So all monitors are plugged in and ready to go. Now is the moment of truth. Do they actually switch on, or will this be a complete disaster? Who knows? Let's go and test it out. Yeah, it would be quite important to switch it on. That'd be nice. I'm going to pretend that I didn't just fall over. So these monitors are three times 1080p, and the top one is also 1080p. And what I've done, I've downloaded a Sony Bravia 4K demo. Now you might be thinking, well why have I downloaded a 4K demo and it's not a 4K monitor? I'm going to go into uh, the NVIDIA settings, into the control panel. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and play the video across all three monitors. The top one I can't do unfortunately because that's plugged into a separate laptop. Here we go. So we have got set up not full display. So we've done that already. So when I move left, it goes to the left monitor. When I move right, it goes to the right monitor. Easy. But now what I'm going to do under 3D settings, on the left I've pressed configure, surround and physx. So here we've got surround configuration, span displays with surround. Press configure. So if this is correct, that's monitor three, two, one. Uh, um, no, that's not right, is it? We want two to be on the right. Yeah, three, one, two. Don't I have no idea what's in this order, but basically you have to match up the numbers of the monitors. So it's just going to think about it and take take a couple of seconds and the monitors are back in business. If you're uh, eagle-eyed, you'll be able to tell that the Windows background has become really stretched. It's, good. it's sort of just going across the entire uh, span of the monitors. So, yeah, that's, I think that's all done, so we'll just click X. So I'm going to go back to this video and play it with films and televisions. That's just the Windows default player. You click the, the you probably can't see it, there's a dot in the bottom right of the uh, films and television player and you just press zoom to fill so what it's done it's filled the entire screen and if you press full screen for luck there we go we have a full screen demo let's go ahead and press play so as you can see the video is actually playing across all three monitors so it's like a ultra ultra widescreen. <laughs> well, as you can see the monitors are working right because considering they're just sort of ex office mo monitors that people were just getting rid of I mean I think they do a good job they've got really good contrast naturally I don't know if that's coming across on camera or whether the camera's making it look a bit weird but the actual uh, difference between the colours and the black is actually really good and all these monitors are also um, map displays as well so they're not going to be all reflective so if you turn the light on or whatever then you don't have to worry about the light reflecting you don't have to stare at your face when you're on the computer I mean for me that's a great thing but yeah as you can see it's working fine that's looking really impressive the reason why I decided to choose a 4k video my laptop's gone to sleep ignore that oh, I mean, wake up monitor full screen again. Yeah, ignore the part where you have to drag the player across all the screens. You don't actually need to do that, you can just press full screen and it'll just do it anyway. Yeah, what I was saying, the reason why I chose a 4K video to play on the monitor is because you have to take the vertical resolution into account. The vertical resolution is 3 times 1080p. No, 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 3 times 1920. So, what is that, like 500, 5000 and... My mouse is no good. So yeah, that is all cool. I like the colours, the colours are brilliant on the monitor. But yeah, obviously when you finished with the NVIDIA, because what it can do when you open Google Chrome, 
It will also open Google Chrome into this giant, ridiculously sized Google Chrome. <laughs> so, whoa. So, if you need all that space to type in a website, you're in luck. So yeah, oh wait, we've got the full resolution that I was trying to work out earlier on. It's all the way down here. So it's 5760 by 1080. Yeah, one downside is that this game is not designed for triple monitors, so there's going to be some parts of it which are kind of cut off. Anyway, let's go ahead and play a game. Now, annoyingly, this one, this isn't my game save. This is beginning of time. I think this is actually in permadeath mode, so that's not good. It's actually working fine. Oh, wait, I'm not sure about the viewing angle. Wait, yeah, the viewing angle is kind of a little bit funny at the edges when you're turning around. It's, pl it's definitely playable. I'm surprised it's not really, like, being all jerky when you're playing it. What is the frame rate? Graphics. Show this, I've got all the settings on it, some gold and I. Uh, we're actually getting 50 FPS. I mean, it could be a whole lot worse, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, what it does, it sort of stretches the pixels out on the side. Yeah, it definitely makes a difference. If you reduce the, fo the field of view, it does make it look a whole lot better. And we're off. Great parking, 10 out of 10. So yeah, that actually works surprisingly well. So if you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button. If you want any more of this sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe and ding that bell icon for post notifications. Don't forget to follow me at TechBethel. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. For all the tech info you need, head over to techbethel.com. If you want some sweet merch, head over to techbethel.com forward slash shop. We've got shipping from Europe and the USA. We've got t-shirts, we've got hoodies, we've got all sorts. And we've got different designs as well. So we've got the Tech Baffle logo, we've got all sorts of random designs, head over to techbaffle.com forward slash shop. <laughs>